Hello, good morning, if it's morning for you. My favorite season of the year is fall. I live in a place that doesn't really have, like we have fall, but it's very much delayed and also not really what I'm used to. It's supposed to be 95 today and it is the middle of October, so that's something. My partner's gone for the weekend and I'm, I just know I'm gonna be bored, so I'm trying to have the perfect fall day today and I have like pretty low standards for what that is. <laughs> First I'm gonna be making a little pumpkin spice drink. Not really like a huge pumpkin spice person. I do like it every now and then but it's not something that I'm like constantly seeking out. So I'm gonna try and make a pumpkin cream cold foam. It's a little bit difficult because the recipe I'm working with is not vegan but I do have vegan whipping cream. I'm gonna go to the library. I put a bunch of books on hold. So I'm hoping in a few hours they might have this ready for me. It's doing something. I don't know. I have my glass out. This was given to me by my friend when we were in a book club. She's awesome. I do kind of want to try some of the cold foam before I put it. That is really good. Oh my god, I'm so excited. It's good. I wish the chai was stronger, but I also probably should just get like chai concentrate and not try and make my own chai. Should have looked up the library hours because they're not open on the weekend. I don't know why I thought they were. I might go and buy one of the books that I have on my list, but it's not available and it's not going to be available, so I might just get that and start reading. My hair's still drying, so don't judge me. This is one of my absolute favorite things to eat in the fall, and it's from Trader Joe's. <laughs> Sounds really easy, but just something about it is so special, but it's the Harvest Chili. It's amazing, it's vegan. It, it's not like labeled gluten, I think most of this stuff isn't labeled gluten-free, but I haven't gotten sick from it, and I'm very sensitive, as in like I have celiac disease sensitive, and it hasn't gotten me sick. I'm gonna eat this and I'm probably gonna watch Portlandia, which is one of my favorite shows of all time. This is the fit. I got little cowboy boots on. I've got these amazing fall socks, even though they're mostly tucked under. And then Ursa Fibers and Thrifted Top. The sleeves are kind of funky, but I kind of like it. <laughs> I'm gonna go to the bookstore and then I might go to National Grocers if I have the energy. I'm back from the bookstore. I did get a book, which I'm really excited about. Monstrilio by Gerardo Simona Cordova. I don't really know the details of what it's about. A monster is like being grown, I think, by a mother after she loses her son. A meditation on grief, acceptance, and the mo monstrous sides of love and loyalty. I really like the cover, like these fun colors and this like little guy. Very cool. I'm really sad that I didn't get to go to the library, but I did want to recommend four really good books for October that I've already read and are like on my very top books. I would recommend to my friends, which is now you, who just made you my friend, so. Sorry, you have to listen to what books I think you should read. First, I'm gonna start off with one that I think a lot of people have read at this point. Every time I go into a bookstore, I see it, um, which is funny because I feel like I bought it and I like hadn't heard of it. Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. It's a collection of short stories. It feels very like experimental and spooky. There's a lot of magical realism and there's also some like horror elements. I've kind of had this obsession with short story books for a while now and I think it's because if there's like one of the stories that I really like I can go back and just read it and like kind of be done and not have to read the whole collection and I really like also reading the whole collection when it all kind of like connects together and I feel like this book I mean obviously has a theme and feels very haunting and interesting in this way that I feel like a lot of authors don't capture 
I guess. I don't know. I really liked it. Sorry, I had to get my microphone because of the AC. Our AC is so loud. This is a really good book. I really enjoyed it. Obviously, it has a bunch of awards. Other people enjoy it. I would recommend. It's like spooky. It's not really gory. There's definitely like scary parts. I think it's the right level of scary for me. Like I want to be like put in suspense. And honestly, I like when it feels like a little bit <laughs> superstitious, supernatural. But when it starts getting into just like straight up ghost, I, I like struggle with like not getting paranoid. So... <laughs> that's just me my next book i don't think a lot of people would think of this when they think of like horror or scary books i probably have like four books that all are like equal to being my favorite book they're all at the same level but this is one of those four and it is annie and the wolves by andromeda romana lax i absolutely love this book it is about this historian who's researching annie oakley and ends up finding this mysterious long lost journal of hers and is trying to like verify if it's real or not. And in part of doing that, she kind of finds out this like secret that Annie has and slowly is kind of like discovering and connecting with Annie Oakley in this way. I read this in like two days and it's kind of a thick book for me to do that. Like when I was a kid, I would do that all the time. But this book reminded me of my childhood and that it was like very much a page turner and i was like blasting through sentences trying to like get to the end i was really trying to finish this book because i was enjoying it so much in it i think there's a lot of suspense and like a little like there's obviously kind of sad elements if you know anything about annie oakley's life but she's also trying to figure like the historian is trying to figure out a mystery in her family which is kind of traumatic i would highly recommend this book and i think the author took like 10 years to write it which is just, it's so well done. Like everything falls into place. Can you see him? <laughs> he found this hair tie. Next book, again, not really horror, but it does have that magical realism. The Changeling by Joy Williams. I bought this thinking it was like some new book. And then I got home and I'm like, 40th anniversary edition. <laughs> this book is, it's been out for a while. It's really good. It's about this character who ends up meeting this man, kind of runs away with him and he brings her to his family's island where there's a bunch of children and his family are raising them but none of the children are really theirs and there's like something kind of creepy and sinister going on she tries to run away she has a baby and she is brought back and there's a bunch of stuff in between i mean a lot of it like it goes fast in the beginning there's a lot of like weird creepy things it feels kind of like fairy tale-esque but there's also like a lot of darkness and i just feel like the character is kind of becoming unhinged you know just a really good kind of like haunting story next up we have another book that is in my top four i feel like there's a point in my life that's very clear of before i read this book and after i read this book and this was probably like one of the first short story books i bought and i was like this just changed my life I love whatever whatever's going on here. I love this. It's The Dark Dark by Samantha Hunt. It's a collection of short stories. Um, the first time I read it, I read like one short story every single day. And I feel like having some space to like think about the story and then read the next one was like a really cool experience reading this book. I feel like they all connected in such a like amazing, strange way. And the characters have so much depth for how short the stories are. And it is like unnerving and haunting the day that i read the yellow i got this moma ticket and so obviously meant to be i think it's really good i think it feels very like scary in an approachable way at least for me this is one of my favorite books i've read this probably like five times now and i've read like separate stories more than that <laughs> and it's just so good i will let you know if this book is good i have a feeling it's going to be this day didn't really end up being that much of a fall day because i didn't do anything that i was planning on doing i mean i went to the bookstore but then i didn't really record anything i have this thing when i'm like in public wearing my glasses i feel like i can't see anything other than like straight in front of me and it's kind of disorienting and like anxiety inducing i just feel like i can't like look around and i can i just I don't know. So I was like walking down like the same four aisles a million times trying to find Mr. Splitfoot by Samantha Hunt because I haven't read it and I've heard really good things about it and wasn't going to ask anyone. I couldn't see anyone. It's a 
don't think about drinking apple juice out of this specific bottle. Top tier. This was my last snack of the evening. These are really good. I'm excited. This smells amazing. They're gluten-free and vegan. I like a lot of their other flavors. And I decided I'm going to make pumpkin bread tomorrow. I have a bunch of pumpkin puree. I picked up all my books from the library. I did get way too many. But I think I'm going to be able to finish them. Because I already finished the other book. It was really good. The Lolo Woods, which is actually a graphic novel, which I haven't read in like a really long time. Slade House by David Mitchell. And then I have Night Neon, Tales of Mystery and Suspense by Joyce Carol Oates. Bridge by Lauren Fuchs. I'm a little bit nervous because some of these are really like thick. Lastly, I have like three more books on hold, <laughs> but those are ones that I like knew I wouldn't get probably for at least another week, but Anyways, this is Lone Woman. Okay, I'm most excited for Night Neon and probably Bridge. Also, I'm like remembering how much I really love the plasticky stuff on the books. It's just very satisfying to me, I don't know. I kind of turned this just into a whole month vlog because <laughs> I didn't really get to do as much as I wanted on that one day, but I will say Monstrilio is an amazing book. I absolutely loved it. It was so good. I read it in like two days. I'm really glad that I bought Monstrilio because it is such a good book. I know I'm gonna like go back and read it again sometime and I would really highly recommend it. It's kind of intense and the characters are really interesting. Next weekend after this, me and my partner went hiking and we got to see these little turkeys. They were so cute. I really wanted to go look at the fall leaves and it probably is my favorite thing about fall. It was a really beautiful hike. We've done it before. The leaves hadn't quite fully changed color and it snowed on us, which I kind of find fun, but it was definitely very cold for what we were expecting, but the vibes were completely right and I had a good hike. I'm probably going to be hiking a lot more now that it's cooled down. I'm going to be able to hike more, which I'm really excited for. My cheeks are so red. <laughs> also, the books at the library, I'm almost finished. I still have one more week to return them. I probably wouldn't recommend Slade House, honestly, and Night Neon was good, but it was... Like, really intense themes for what I would normally choose to read. And I haven't finished Bridges yet, so I don't want to give it a judgment. The graphic novel was cool. I really liked the illustration and the story was interesting. And I haven't read Lone Woman yet. I'm hoping I can finish before I return them, but my book club is also trying to read a book right now, so I'm overwhelmed with books. I hope you had a good October. Cowboy has definitely enjoyed his October. He's gotten plenty of door and window time. Okay, bye.